the 11th Annual Sickle Cell Symposium was a great success. Patients, doctors, and pharmaceutical companies all convened in Fort Lauderdale to discuss best practices on how to tackle the disease. The unique aspect of this conference is that it is all sickle cell. I feel this conference is particularly important because it brings together basic scientists, clinical workers and members of the sickle cell community and it enables the community to state their needs and priorities to the researchers and the researchers to share with the community themselves their latest findings and insights. When we go to the pharmaceutical company, we're going to let them know that we have your interests at heart. We need to do a better job of educating our patients as to what sickle cell anemia is. Sickle cell anemia is an inherited blood disease that turns healthy red cells into abnormal sickle-shaped red cells which can cause blood vessels occlusion that blocks the flow of oxygen to body parts, tissue infarctions, joints and abdominal pain, as well as other problems. It is an excruciating experience to experience the pain. It's as though somebody takes and cuts off the flow of blood to a particular organ or a location in your body. And we tend to think, oh, that's when my hand falls asleep. Well, you have to multiply that so many times, 10, 100, thousands of times worse. Researchers estimate 60 to 80 percent of people affected with sickle cell are African Americans. Patients voice their frustrations with the slow progress of new drug developments and health care disparities. There is no reason that there should only be one medication. The fact is that there is, and I'm sure it has, it's very racially based. Hydroxyurea was actually made for cancer patients. Then they said, oops, this works for sickle cell anemia patients too. If sickle cell was a pure white disease, we wouldn't be standing here now because I could tell you about those diseases that are rare already. They get funding. I think the sickle cell disease does sometimes uh, fail to receive the resources it deserves because it is associated with people of color and certainly in the UK, there's a feeling that uh, other diseases that affect the majority community there are given priority over sickle cell disease. Pharmaceutical companies such as Global Blood Therapeutics inspired hope with their new drug in development. GBT enters this market because of its commitment to specifically sickle cell disease. The company itself was founded because it was believed that we could make a drug that would have an effect and that if we could get that drug to people, we would change people's lives. The informative day sessions were topped off by bringing everyone together with music and food by celebrity chef Rome. Those of you who have sickle cell, grits have some wonderful benefits. Vitamin B. I had the wonderful opportunity to be here all week long preparing foods, preparing things that they can eat that's gonna give them energy. So how do we deliver the message? So I thought about, we deliver the message how we want to receive the message. So I develop an atmosphere where you feel like you're coming into the house, let's sit around the kitchen table and try to solve this problem. What is the real problem? The 2017 Sickle Cell Symposium ended with an air of optimism. This was very exciting to me to be here today to uh, hear the announcement of another drug coming to the marketplace. And I'm hoping that I can enter into the trial and also be a person to help test it and get it to the marketplace. What we're moving forward in medicine is really individualized therapy that is tailored to the patient's needs. And I think if you look at all the different drugs, there are going to be drug regimens out there that are going to be successfully used to treat patients and give them that high quality of life. The symposium founder, Dr. Lynetta Bronte, shared the importance of the conference. Everything scientific, everything medical, educational, patient advocacy, you know that when you come to this meeting you're going to get all of those things. So much so that those three days are going to be so impactful that when you go back to your home institutions and your community, you'll have something that you can not only implement, but you'll be able to come back and report on the next year and we will know how to tweak certain programs, what type of grants to apply for. So. You know, it really will move the needle in sickle cell disease care, research, and creating an infrastructure for patients throughout their lifespan.